Today you're gonna learn how to cook tapioca pearls at home, also known as boba. The type that we're cooking today is restaurant quality grade A tapioca pearls, the type that are imported from Taiwan and usually found online and occasionally at Asian or Chinese markets. So the kind that we're not making today, the quick cook kind, the way that you know if you have that is a few things. It might say quick cook, it might say cook in under 15 minutes. The other thing is if you push down on the balls, they're either really, really rock hard or they're kind of like jelly. So that's not the type we're making today. The type that we're making today is the premium tapioca from Taiwan. It's the type that all of the bubble tea shops use and it takes about an hour and a half to cook. The other way to tell if that's the type is when you have the little balls and you push down on them, they break up and disintegrate into little bits of powder. This type is very, very delicate. Now, if you do open up your bag of tapioca and you notice that a lot of it has turned to powder, don't worry. You simply take it out really, really carefully, maybe shift it through a sieve, get rid of all of the little powder bits. Um, we only wanna cook the actual pearls themselves because what happens is if you get too much of this powder in your pot, it will have a tendency to boil over more. So we just wanna make sure simply to get rid of all of this powder before we cook it. And if you do own a restaurant or a cafe and or you're looking to make a huge batch of boba, then be sure to click the link above where I will go ahead and put a link to my video of how to cook a huge batch of tapioca for a bubble tea shop or cafe. I'll also be sure to link that down below in the description. The cooking time for today will take approximately about an hour and a half, so do plan accordingly. I prefer 8.5 millimeter size because I find that goes up a normal bubble tea shop straw really, really well, and it's really easy to cook also. The other way that you can cook tapioca is like with a rice cooker. Oh, you can also cook it on a stove with an open flame. Today I'm going to be using just a simple pot with a lid on this type of stove. The settings that you really just wanna be familiar with is how to make sure it boils, and then of course, how to turn it off. And always with cooking anything on the stove, you definitely wanna be careful. If you're a child, you want adult supervision because this can become really, really hot and you don't wanna burn your hands. The other utensil that you'll need today is some sort of spoon, so that way you can go ahead and stir it. I happen to have a slotted spoon today, which I could use instead of a sieve if I need to, or a colander. But if you do have one of those two items, it will make things a lot easier. I'm using one cup of the uncooked pearls. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh it for you so you know approximately the weight. But this recipe is actually really easy to do with an actual cup. And also we're doing a one to five ratio, which means we're gonna do one cup of the uncooked boba to five parts water. The one to five ratio works really well, but you can always add more water, but not more boba. So if you've got one cup of boba, you can do five or more cups of water. But if you've only got five cups of water, don't do more than one cup of boba because you'll have a lot of difficulties in cooking it and it will probably boil over and it just won't cook right. So I'm just gonna measure out this cup of boba for you just so you can see approximately how much it weighs. All right, so that's 167 grams. So in that sort of rough range of weight. But if you don't have access to a scale, don't worry. You can just use a measuring cup and use the one to five ratio. And if you are going by weight, then go ahead and just multiply that times five, and that will let you know approximately how much in weight or in milliliters that you will need in order to fill your pot. And when you fill your pot with water, you wanna make sure that there's definitely enough headroom for the water to expand, and of course the boba to expand, because as it's cooking, everything will expand a bit, and you don't want it boiling over onto whatever surface you are cooking on, of course. And when the boba is all done cooking, it's going to be sitting in a nice, sweet solution. This could be a sugar solution, brown sugar, honey, or even a brown sugar syrup, and we'll be getting to that at the very end. All right, so now that we've covered the basics, let's Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and take this over to the sink and fill it up, and I'll show you exactly how to do that here. If you're able to fill it up with hot water, it will cut down on the amount of time that you have it on the stove trying to get the water to the boiling temperature. But if you don't, don't worry. Cold water is perfectly fine. Right now, we just need five cups of water. And there we go. 
So before we put the boba in, we want to make sure that this water is at a rolling boil. So I'm putting my lid on and I'm turning the temperature up to what I know can get it to that point. And then after the water is boiling, then we're gonna add the boba. So I'm just gonna leave it going here and I'm gonna come back as soon as it's at a rolling boil. So I'll see you back in just a minute. Well, that boiled in no time. I'm gonna go ahead and add the tapioca now. Let's watch. You're going to carefully take off the lid. As you can see, it's at a rolling boil. And we're just gonna slowly add it in here, kind of move it about a little bit. You don't wanna just dump it in one whole thing. There we go. And then just pop on the lid. Now, I've got a little bit of space open and I'll talk about that in just a second, but we definitely wanna make sure that all of the steam is able to come out, but not too much steam. And then the next thing you wanna do is lower the heat just a touch, all right? So for me, I had it on level seven in order to start boiling. I'm just gonna turn it down to level six. We wanna get it boiling again and it's gonna get there, don't worry. And some people might think, oh, well, I need to stir it right away or it's gonna to stick together. Um, not necessarily. With this technique, it actually won't. So like I said, we just put it in. We don't just dump it in. We kind of sprinkle it in around, you know, the pot. And then we put the lid on with a little bit of space so that way the steam can escape. And then we're gonna leave it to cook for 30 minutes. But halfway in between, we're gonna give it a really good stir. So you wanna set two timers on your phone or device. The first one is 30 minutes. That's the full amount of time it's gonna take for the boba to cook. The second one, add timer, is for 15 minutes. That's the stir point, right? So again, the boba is cooking for a full 30 minutes and we're gonna be stirring it halfway in between. So I've got my timer set. I'm just going to walk away. Okay, so 15 minute timer has gone off, which means it is time to stir our boba for the first time. All right, so very carefully, we're going to take the lid off here and give it a nice stir. Now they're not fully cooked yet, so just be gentle when you're stirring, but we just wanna stir the top, make sure that nothing is sticking together up here, and also just stir the bottom and make sure that nothing is being stuck on the bottom area. But look how nice those are looking, see? And nothing seems to be sticking together, so it's going well. Then when we put the lid back on, we just wanna make sure to give it a little more air space. So I'm gonna open it up just a little more. We still wanna keep it boiling. We still wanna have that steam inside, but we just wanna make sure that we're allowing some of it to escape. If it does happen to kind of boil over just a touch, that's totally fine. You just wanna let a little more air out. But at this point, uh, we wanna still keep it boiling. If there seems to be any difficulty uh, at this stage, it might simply be that your pot just wasn't big enough at that point. Um, but that's something that you'll need to then readdress. And then the next time you cook it, you'll just wanna use a bigger pot. So while this is cooking the next 15 minutes, I'll just go ahead and address a few things that might come up while you're cooking. So when I put this lid on the second time, I gave it a little more air space to allow the steam to come up. That's because simply occasionally, you might get a little bit that spills over the side, which isn't ideal. It just means that perhaps it doesn't have quite enough room for the steam to escape. Or alternatively, it might be that your pot just isn't big enough. So the next time you go to cook this, you might wanna use a bigger pot. Sometimes what happens is when the steam gets trapped in there, it just kind of really needs to escape. And I feel like at that point, it's gonna boil over. And we don't want that happening because it'll just you know, ruin your stove and your appliances and whatnot. But generally speaking, you wanna to stick to the one to five ratio, one cup of boba to five cups of water. But you could always do one cup of boba to six or seven cups of water. Just make sure that your pot is big enough in order to know that when that water and boba expands, it's going to go from about here to here. So make sure you've got enough space in your pot. The other option that you can do is just turn down the temperature a little bit. We wanna keep it boiling. We still wanna keep cooking it. But let's say, for example, I had mine on a seven, I went to a six, and maybe it still feels like it's kind of going over the edge a little bit. You can take it down to a five. But make sure it's still boiling and it's still cooking. I've had some people in the past say, well, you know, my boba just didn't quite cook right. It seemed too thick and goopy and it just didn't work. 
Well, there's a myriad of different reasons why that could possibly be, but if you are sticking to that one to five ratio, you really shouldn't have too many difficulties. So I think those would be some tips and techniques in order to help you cook your boba better. Now, so far, we've only stirred it once, and as you could tell, the boba was looking quite nicely, actually. It wasn't sticking together, everything looked okay. If at this point, you just wanna walk away again, you're more than welcome to. Just make sure that none of it is boiling over onto your stove. And if you do alternatively feel like you really wanna stir it, go for it, it's not gonna hurt it. Just make sure you do it really gently because obviously the boba hasn't fully cooked yet and we wanna make sure that it doesn't break apart or affect the actual roundness of the actual tapioca itself. So as you can see here, I went ahead and opened it up just a little more to allow for more steam to escape. I probably could have used a bigger pot because I know that my cup was quite up to the top there. Um, but other than that, everything is going really well and it's cooking very, very nicely. Often people ask me, after they cook the boba at home, can they go ahead and stick the remainder of it in the fridge? Well, I would say no. First of all, because it's really easy to go ahead and cook a small amount of boba on your stove, so you really shouldn't be needing to cook a huge amount. But also, once you put it in the fridge, it's gonna kinda get really hard. It's not really gonna have that nice, chewy consistency. The one thing that I think people forget is that tapioca inside a bubble tea is like a dessert. It's a delicacy. It's something that's meant to be consumed within the first four hours of you cooking it. So if you put it in the fridge, unfortunately it's gonna get really hard and kinda crunchy and it's not gonna taste like it should really. But I have heard of people making a larger batch and keeping it in the fridge and then putting it in the microwave for like a few seconds maybe or something. I'm not really sure. I've never personally done it, but I'm sure if you wanted to, you could experiment with something similar. The ideal amount of time that you wanna consume boba is in that four hour range. And if you happen to leave it out at room temperature for longer than that, unfortunately it's gonna get really kind of big and mushy, kind of like a marshmallow, and it's gonna get all gunky and weird and we just don't wanna go down that path. So definitely try to consume it within the first four hours of making it. This is the exact same way it was when we would cook boba at my shop. After four hours, we would throw it away, and we always had a rotation of making new boba throughout the day. Now granted, we made boba in really huge, large quantities, of course, but we were serving a large amount of people. If you're at home, the benefit is you can just make one serving. You know, this cup that we're cooking today will make anywhere between two to four servings of boba for a bubble tea. If you need less than that, you can half the recipe easily, or you can even do less, just in order to suit your needs and exactly how many bubble tea drinks that you wanna make at home. So to recap on that, idea, just go ahead and try to consume the boba once it's cooked, and then that way it will be the optimum taste of amazingness. As you'll see here in just a second, as soon as our timer is up, the brown, normal, traditional tapioca looks much different when cooking than the clear white tapioca. Now, I did a video above, which you can go ahead and click on, and I'll also put it down in the description below, of how to cook the white clear tapioca. And it's basically the same. I think it's just the main differences are the smell. I find that the brown tapioca just has that really nice, rich, sweet smell to it. And also, the way that it cooks is a a little bit different. The water, it becomes very kind of murky and really, really thick. And um, when you clean it, sometimes you'll see like, I call it boba gunk that kind of goes through the colander. It's kind of weird looking. Whereas when you cook the white tapioca, you don't really get that. But all in all, it's basically about the same. However, um, for the mini tapioca, that is different when you're cooking it. And I will be making a video for that. So please be sure to keep your eyes peeled for that one, especially if you wanna learn how to cook mini tapioca at home. If you're finding this information valuable, please feel free to click that like button. It helps my video to get ranked so other people can watch it too. Thanks so much. Okay, so the 30 minutes is up, and we've done the 15 minute stir in between. So now you're wondering, well, what's next? We're actually gonna let it sit without heat for 15 minutes. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and turn off the stove, right? No heat. And we're gonna come over here and give it a stir. So be careful taking the lid off and give it a stir here. As you can see, it's very, very thick, very goopy. There's nothing sticking to the bottom. All right, there we go. And we're just gonna put the lid on directly. Just directly put the lid on. Now, you might hear it kind of still boiling a little bit, but that's okay. As the heat disappears, it will calm down and it will continue cooking a little bit. 
The main cooking of the 30 minutes is completed, but we still need it to be resting in that heat for 15 minutes. So again, we did 30 minutes cooking, stirring halfway in between. Now it's done cooking, but we still need it to sit for 15 minutes and just rest, just relax and hang out with the lid on. Okay, so I'm gonna set my timer for 15 minutes. And we're just gonna let it hang out. Now, while it's doing that, I just wanted to bring up one more interesting point. I've always found that the regular tapioca, the brown type, it tends to cook a little more in volume. It expands more, it's got kind of more of a thicker, kind of gunkier type consistency when it's cooking. So err on the side of caution and go for a larger pot than you think you might need. All right, so I will be right back as soon as that timer goes off. All right, so our final 15 minutes is complete. So now we've cooked it for a full 30 minutes, stirring it halfway in between, maybe a few times thereafter if you want, and then the final 15 minutes of it just resting and setting. So let's take a look. Carefully remove the lid. As you can see, the volume of it has gone down, and those are looking done. Nice and cooked all the way through. A little bit translucent in color. Beautiful. Now, you don't wanna eat it just yet. We still need to rinse it, believe me. You don't wanna ingest any of those juices in there right now might give you a bit of a stomach ache. So let's go ahead and take it to the sink and rinse it off. So carefully, we're gonna move it from the stove to the sink, and we wanna turn on cold water. We're just gonna dump it in the colander. And it's okay if you get a few in the bottom. That's totally normal. Just get those out of there like that. Now, do you see all that brown gunkiness? That's why you wanna make sure to rinse it off first. So let's get rid of that. So you wanna give it a really good rinse for about a minute. And while we're doing this as well right now is we're stopping the boba from cooking also. So as you can see, it looks nice and plump, cooked through, beautiful color. All right, I've laid out a few different options of different kind of sweetness that I was telling you about. So you can always do like a white sugar or a brown sugar solution, mix it with a little bit of hot water until it's dissolved. Same thing for honey. And then today what I'm gonna be using is a brown sugar syrup. This tastes very, very similar to the type of syrup that you would get at very popular bubble tea shops where they kind of put it around the outside of the cup and it gives those kind of finger effect on the inside of the cup, if you will. It's got a really nice flavor. It's like a Taiwanese brown sugar or a palm sugar type flavor. So I'm gonna be using this today, but there are a lot of other really great options. And again, in the description where I've put the link to my shop video of where I made a giant batch of boba, I also have a recipe in there of a brown sugar and longan honey syrup, which is amazing. And the boba just really soaks that up, gives it a really, really nice sweet flavor. And that is a really Really great option for a large batch of boba. And of course you can make it um, as, as a small batch as well for a solution. So again, I've just laid these out as an example for you guys just to see, but today I'm gonna be using the premium tiger brown sugar uh, syrup and we're gonna go ahead and mix it in. So now that I've rinsed off the boba, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of in the bowl and we're gonna add this to it. And we wanna make sure that the boba, which has been cooked and cleaned, it will now sit in the solution for a minimum of 15 minutes. That's kind of the ideal time for it to have that opportunity to kind of expel a little bit of the water and take in that sweetness. So that way the tapioca has a really nice sweetness to it and it just kind of melts in your mouth and it has that amazing flavor. But of course, you don't have to do this step. If you prefer to have your tapioca in your drink without any sweetness added to it, don't worry, go ahead and skip this step. But I definitely recommend, my personal preference is to make sure it has a nice level of sweetness to it. it in here, make sure it's all coated. And we would do the exact same thing if we were using a simple syrup, uh, sugar, brown sugar, honey. We just wanna make sure everything's nice and coated. 
We're just gonna leave it here for 15 minutes and give it an opportunity to soak up all of that sweetness. Now, while this is sitting for 15 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the pot and colander and the spoon, because sometimes that tapioca gunk kind of gets stuck on there and you really wanna try to get it off before it gets hard and cakes on there. So if that means putting it in your dishwasher or putting it in the sink with some hot soapy water, I like to do that while this is kind of resting off to the side. All right, so the cooked tapioca has been resting in the sugar solution for about 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and give it a try and see how it tastes. Well, it definitely looks amazing. Very, very nice, dark color. Little bit of translucency and shininess. Mm. Perfect. Mm. It tastes amazing, of course, because we've had it in the sugar solution, but the consistency inside your mouth is like kind of chewy, but not too much, right? So it's not hard, it's not crunchy or anything like that. Like sometimes the instant boba tends to be like, and it's not overly soft and overly cooked or anything like, um, you know, a marshmallow. It's just that perfect tapioca, that perfect boba. Yeah. So nice. And again, I love the sweetness factor when it comes to the boba. And you can really get that flavor in there when you bite down on it. Kind of is in the background, if you will. Of course, because it's in the sauce right now, of course you get that initial sweetness that's very, very bright. But normally um, when we add it to a drink, we wanna kind of get that as sort of the aftertaste as we're chewing on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my drink. I made one of my favorites and a super easy one to make at home, just a strawberry milk tea. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the tapioca to it and let's see how it tastes. All right, and I've got my reusable glass boba sized straw here. So let's give it a try and see how it tastes. Well, of course, the drink tastes amazing. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, it's just perfect, honestly. It was like exactly how I would want boba if I went to a bubble tea shop, you know? You kind of start chewing it, very starchy. Like I said, not too hard, not too soft but there's that level of sweetness behind it that kind of peeks through when you're chewing it. Mm, so good. And because it's fresh and it's been out for 15 minutes sitting in the sugar solution, it still is like kind of got that room temperature warmness to it, which is really, really nice. Mm, it's just, it's like absolutely perfect. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's why I really, really like this recipe when it comes to cooking it because it's just the perfect chewiness. It's not too soft, it's not too hard. It's got a nice firmness to it. It's so, so good. Well, thanks so much for joining me today as I showed you how to cook tapioca pearls from home, also known as boba. If you haven't already, please feel free to click that like button and leave a comment below. Are you a huge tapioca pearl fan? Do you call it boba? Have you tried the white kind? Are you more a traditional brown kind? Do you normally go to a bubble tea shop to order it or do you make it from home? There's so many cool things about boba and I wanna hear all about it. And while you're there, please feel free to subscribe. I bring you a brand new drink video every week and I would love for you to be a part of the YouTube family. See you soon.